Hey everyone, and welcome to the October edition of our monthly leadership podcast, Leading is Leaders. I'm your host, Avery Nesbitt. Hey, we are back in the car this month, and I am joined by a very special guest and a friend. His name is Trey Battle, and uh, you may recognize him from playing a little ball up at the University of Georgia. Also made a pro when uh, selected by the Dallas Cowboys, and he also played for the San Diego Chargers. Correct. Also uh, started down the road to become a surgeon, um, and wind up through a series of events being a director at a local Chick-fil-A in the North Metro Atlanta area. So sounds like you've got um, quite a story to share with us this morning, but thanks for joining us on the podcast. No worries. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, so listen, since I've known you, everyone's been enthralled about the different things that you've done uh, with your life. You don't have a very singular path got a path that's taken a few a few twists and turns because my favorite movie is Forrest Gump <laughs> so you just want to do something <laughs> different about every 10 years or so exactly, exactly. <laughs> well what I what I love about your story kind of like we just talked about is you've had these uh, shifts in season from playing college ball to pro ball um, and then moving into the medical field and then even shifting from there to being a director of uh, Chick-fil-a uh, basically over the operations and the other managers um, I gotta know how how did you do it? how did you shift from this direction to this direction to this direction and not just do it but do it successfully well, what did you learn in maybe those previous seasons right. that set you up for the season you're in now and and maybe even more than that what would you say to other leaders who are going through something and they're trying to figure out how to make sense right. of the twists and the turns. Um, you've done it and you've done it successfully. And man, I'd love to find out how and what you would say to someone else in that same situation. Uh, I'd like to start off really by saying every experience um, is, is a learning experience, whether yeah. it be good or bad, fortunate or misfortunate. I remember from one of the, my psychology classes, it's actually a biology class, uh, Bloom's Taxonomy. It was six different levels of learning. Uh, the first one is just rote memorization, mm -hmm. um, understanding, applying what you understand, analyzing what you apply, evaluating how you applied it, and the last part is creating. So that's the highest level of learning, creating something out of all of the prior or previous experiences that you've had. I mean, it's the basis of any entrepreneur, anyone who wants to you know, do a kickstart or a startup program or yeah. anyone who has a vision. Taking what's passionate, what has driven you, uh, what has formed and molded you at whatever points in your life to pro propel you towards your future. Yeah. Uh, with me, it, it, it was not that, how would I say, pretty. It, <laughs> it wasn't that form of... Uh, wasn't that formal yeah it took some kicks took some bruises took some stumbles took some falls um, but honestly in a nutshell it was just God's grace that got me to where I am today nice. uh, starting from high school to college um, I wanted to play football uh, no one thought I was good enough to play mm. so no one gave me a scholarship so I ended up walking on to the University of Georgia to play football wow. Uh, one of the reasons for that is it was cheap. I had Hope Scholarship. Mm -hmm. My mom had already I had three older sisters. My mom had already put them through college, so I didn't want to be a financial burden. So I chose the University of Georgia to go to school. There you go. Uh, turned out to be one of the, like I said, one of the decisions I wish I was in control of, yeah. but I know it was because really God led me down that path. <laughs> yeah. Um, ended up being all American there. Ended up being all SEC, all these accolades. Yeah. Uh, so fast forward, I always wanted to be a doctor. Uh, my my dream as a kid was to be a doctor. Um, finished up my football career at Georgia. I was not going to go to the draft. Had a conversation with my dad, and he basically said, 
you don't want to look down the road 10 years from now and say, I wish I would have, I wish I could have, or right, I right. should have. Yeah. So I said, all right, I'll enter into the draft. Yeah. Didn't get selected, picked up as a free agent. Again, <laughs> wish I could say it was some you know, great plan or something that I, I just, you know, vision that I had, but right. it was through a situation being in the right place, right time, God's calling on my life yep. and ended up playing six years of professional football. Come on. Once I finished that, I wanted to pursue my original dream of going to medical school. Yeah. And it really didn't start off that way. <laughs> okay. It started off with me being retired. Okay. Sitting at home playing PlayStation and my wife coming home saying, what'd you do today? Uh, nothing, just played the game. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. not going to happen. You got to get out. You got to do something. Uh, so we moved to Georgia. We were, we were living in Florida at the time. So we moved back to Georgia. I actually hadn't finished my, my degree. I, I didn't register at Georgia, so I played you know, my four years of football, which is only three and a half years of school. Yeah. So went back to school, realized I knew nothing. Remember, wow. remember nothing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the freshman, you know, early science classes you have to take to get into medical school. It yeah. had been a decade since I'd taken those classes. Wow. So I said, all right, this is going to be my dream. Got to start from scratch. Yeah. So started over in my degree field. Wow. <laughs> Went to school another four years, graduated, and um, applied to medical school. Uh, going down that path, ended up getting a job at Piedmont uh, in the operating room as an anesthesia tech. Okay. So over a six-year period of going to school, working full-time, having a family, I saw my family 0% of the time. You get that? Uh, so went ahead and applied to all the medical schools, uh, was sitting there after all the work is done, all your toil, and I really was hit with the question, for what? <laughs> what did I gain over these six years? Uh, to get a PA, uh, MD beside my name right. and go work in some clinic for the next 30 to 40 years of my life, paying off medical, medical school debt right. and losing a family in the process. Wow. And at that moment, I sat there and said it, it wasn't worth it. So I picked my family up. We went school shopping and I asked them, what, did you want to, what do you want to eat? I said, we want Chick-fil-A. No. Side note, I had received so much free Chick-fil-A over the course of my life <laughs> of playing football. Right. And I had, I could really count on my hand the amount of times I had gone into a Chick-fil-A gotcha. to actually purchase food. Wow. But they said Chick-fil-A, okay, couldn't tell you what was on the menu. <laughs> so we're sitting there and it got real emotional because I realized in that moment as I was playing with the kids, having ice cream, eating cookies, buying school clothes. I, I haven't done this. I haven't wow. been a father. I hadn't been a husband over the past six years of my life. Wow. And in that moment, it was how do I share this feeling of just enjoyment of being around being what God called me to be, yeah. a husband and a father. Yeah. And how do I transfer this to other people, yeah. other men, other families? And in that moment, I say, you know, I'm, I'm going to open a Chick-fil-A. Wow. So I pulled out my phone, I looked at what it took, and I hadn't looked back since then. Wow. But to go back to your original question, transitioning, my transition from football back to school was probably the most difficult transition in my life. Really? I was fortunately, well, fortunately misfortunate to retire from the NFL during a period where uh, immeasurable amount of resources and research was going into how to actually help these athletes transition into wow. a normal life. Gotcha. For professional athletes, it's four, well, really three to, you know, some guys like Tom Brady had well, 15 years right. of, of your life. Yeah. That leaves another 30 to 40 years of being something other than a football player. Right. You have to enter a second career of 
either retirement or a second career of work. Yeah. Um, I was also fortunately, misfortunate enough to retire in an era where athletes were taking their lives, mm. taking the lives of others, yep. beating people senseless, being senseless. Yep. And I was a part of uh, a, a cohort that lost friends. Um, I, I did a lot of work with Junior Seau's Foundation when I was in San Diego and lost him to suicide. Yep. Uh, my roommate in college and uh, teammate in San Diego, uh, Paul Oliver, uh, lost him to suicide. Yeah. So I went down this extremely dark path of, of what is it that I'm going to do with my life? Who am I? I yeah. was literally in an identity crisis. Yeah. So for me, the, the most important thing of transitioning is to know who you are prior to, during, and after the transition. That's really good. Who is your... Who are you at your core? And I, I wish I could say that I, I came up with this on my own through prayer, but no, it's a counseling. Yeah. It, it, I, I was in therapy for a good part of a year and a half. Yeah. And through all of that, I, like I said, I wish I would have been through prayer and answering what God had called for me in my life. Yeah. Uh, but it was actually a therapist talking me through who I was at my core. That's really good. And, and through it, uh, his goal was to equip me with different tools yeah. in, in my tool belt. Yeah. Um, how to deal with stressful situations, how to deal with the unknown, how to deal with uh, transitioning. Yeah. And in the end, it, it came up that I was a server. I, I was someone who wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about me is I, I actually, I absolutely loathe taking pictures. Really? I, I don't have a social media account to this day. <laughs> gotcha. And that, that stems from... So good luck trying to follow him when this is yeah, over. Exactly. <laughs> but really that stems from, I don't want to take pictures. I want to make impressions in people's lives. I want to make memories. So yeah. you don't have to have a, you don't have to have photographic technology to remember the impact that I made on your life. Yeah. And that's who I was at my core. And I thought that I was reaching that through medicine. Uh, operating on people and, and doing that, but really it was it was for selfish ambition. I just wanted the white coat, right? And so to humble myself to go to Chick Fil A, start off making biscuits, you yep. for and, and cooking chicken for the first three months of that transition, uh, it really put me in a place mentally that I could say that it's not about what I want; it's about what God wants and what He is. He mended me to be yeah. and that was a server and a helper and I am fulfilling that through Chick-fil-A so that's my transition process that's amazing man so something you said that I don't think I've ever heard when you're in the midst of a transition moment it's not so much about hey what do you want to do what what are you good at what's something that you want to see yourself achieving it's not about that it's about who are you exactly who are you at your core start from there instead of your ambition start from your identity exactly and that's I've, I've literally never heard that and that's a that's a big shift from thinking about what can I do with my hands to who am I on the inside exactly man that was worth the drive right there <laughs> I appreciate it hey thanks for uh, thanks for spending some time with us this has been great for everybody listening for everyone watching um, you can join us for more on leadingisleaders.com uh, you can find out more information about Trey on Wikipedia, but that's pretty much it because he doesn't have a Facebook page. Uh, thanks for stopping by. You can follow us on iTunes and Stitcher, and hopefully something we've said today helps you as you're leading his leaders. See you, everyone.